So thanks everybody for joining on this webinar today. I see a lot of people have uh, signed up today. Um, though this webinar is very US centric, I see a few people logged in from uh, India and from Australia as well. That is surprising, but uh, that's that's good. It's very very good. So uh, the purpose of this webinar really that we are running today is to talk about what are the various factors that impact the cost of custom e-learning. There is so many. There are so many variables that are that impact the price of uh, e-learning, and among vendors across geographies, there are so many uh, pricing. I would say variances that a lot of times customers are are not sure exactly how we've arrived at price. So depending on vendor, where you're getting it built, depending on the scope of project, and it's quite confusing at times. And we we hear this all the time that you know the variant variation in cost quite often is so vast that customers are confused whether they are getting a raw deal, whether they have not given the right input to a vendor to kind of quote for it. So that's really what we are trying to address through this webinar. So let's um, let's, let's just start off. A quick introduction about uh, me and my co-presenter Diana. I am Anand Timothy. You can call me Andy. Andy, uh, I mean, I have been uh, I have started this company in 2007 in Yotra Learning. I've been in the e-learning e-learning industry since 2001, so you can say that you know I've been around the block quite a bit. I worked for multiple e-learning companies before I started in Yotra Learning. I have been in both in the sales role as well as as a project manager, so I I understand both sides of the fence quite well. Uh, Diana, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, yes, hi everyone. Thank you for taking the time to be on this webinar. Um, so I have actually been with the company since inception. I joined in 2007 myself. Uh, um, right now I head the customer success team at Enyota, so sales, learning solutions, etc. is what I take care of. For a large part of my career, I've been an instructional designer and um, I've led the operations team here as well. So happy to be on this webinar and looking forward to chatting with all of you. Um, thanks, Andy. So let's, let's start off. Um, so what we see in the market really is, Diana? I can see your, I can't see the webinar. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, can you, yeah. So what we see from the market quite often is that com customers come to us, you know, we have, we've probably given them a price and they have said that, you know, why is the price, some of our other vendors have quoted a, a lot or some sometimes customers will say that, you know, other vendors have quoted much less. So there is a reason for that variance. A lot of those factors we'll be discussing during our webinar, but the, Amazing thing is that some quite often for the same brief or the same kind of quality, the pricing is quite different from different vendors. And we kind of address why those, what are those factors in this webinar. So, so just a quick introduction about our company. We've been around since 2007. We've been working with clients in the US, UK, Europe, and Australia. And I can assure you the situation over there is just the same. Quite often, customers are confused about why the price is a particular uh, is is a particular amount, and that's really what we want to talk about in this webinar. So, as a company, we've been around. We are close to around 130 people in the learning solutions team. Uh, we work with clients uh, across various industries, so it's not really industry specific. And we've del delivered thousands of hours of uh, e-learning to to clients. So, we we are under we are well aware of all the issues that customers typically face and we've dealt with various kinds of inputs that have come for cust from customers so we understand this issue quite well so let's talk about some of the, the key aspects of what are the options so we are really talking about custom e-learning in this webinar so when we're talking about custom e-learning any corporate organization has or any organization has multiple options in terms of how they execute it. Obviously, one option is to develop it in-house. Uh, another option, in case their in-house team is completely occupied, they may choose to outsource that to a local freelancer in their geography, the US, UK, Europe, Australia, etc. Or they may actually go to an agency which has a team. Maybe those that team is completely in-house, or maybe they use a, uh, a combination of in-house versus freelancers. Or you can approach an offshore custom e-learning agency such as ours 
to get that done. So there are obviously pros and cons of any of these decisions and the decision where what what route do you take to really develop your e-learning that depends on a variety of factors some of it based on the pros and cons some of it based on budgets some of it based on urgency etc so choice of whom you uh, pick to build your custom e-learning will obviously impact what what the final price outcome is so some of these decisions you might make based on uh, how much face to face interaction you need how much what are your budgets in the first place what is the capacity that you're looking for you may go to an agency instead of going to a freelancer if it's a large project etc if you need somebody to come on site you might engage a freelancer who is local if you have a large volume of work then you may choose to go to a, a larger agency moving on if you look look at what are the variables that really uh, impact the price so these freelancers agencies etc will price on a based on a variety of variables themselves they may price it based on levels uh, some of the pricing may be a consequence of charges hourly rates that they charge for specific skill sets some freelancers may charge based on their reputation some agencies may charge based on their reputation as well so they may feel that they command a premium in terms of pricing and accordingly they may charge so it depends whether you want work to be done on site whether you want work to be done completely remotely and obviously even if you when you're talking about agencies even bigger agencies may have a a premium charge to their services as compared to maybe a smaller agency and likewise if you look at it from a location point of view if you're working with an offshore agency then they perhaps their hourly rates are lower etc so there are a variety of reasons why pricing various variants exists between the choices that you may select to actually execute your um, your custom e-learning dana okay so the other other aspect that um, may impact uh, pricing really is also where the market is at the moment so if you look at the market today versus what it was maybe few years ago you will see that you know the pricing for e learning really peaked with flash uh, in up to maybe around 2006 2007 just before the financial crisis hit and after that kind of prices took a bit of a dip uh, for a variety of factors firstly i think the recession really uh, took the steam out of a lot of development shops in terms of budgets got slashed and was obviously a lot of training budgets got slashed as well and at that point of time also automation got better people started looking at more automated routes to actually execute their custom e-learning projects beyond that uh, the iphone emerged flash as a long-term store for building custom e-learning that also was impacted severely and over a period of time if you can see that you know even the impact that storyline brought to the market whenever storyline was released in a way it gave ability of a far better ability in terms of automation to custom e-learning companies and in-house teams as well to build high quality e-learning so that also has kind of impacted the price where we go from here and um, what happens to custom e-learning is a different matter but some of the uh, impact of technology automation and obviously the number of suppliers that are there in the market as well has contributed to where the price points are today As far as the options, as far as location are concerned, a lot of corporates in the US, UK, uh, Europe, and Australia, they work, they all have their own uh, low cost development centers in various parts of the world, especially if you talk about the Fortune 100. They, from a conscious strategy point of view, they may have their IT departments in different parts of the world. But, and that obviously e learning is no exception to that. Sometimes uh, companies have moved their e learning development um, I would say their teams to different parts of the world as well some popular options out there obviously in Central America Costa Rica is emerging as a uh, as a great place Argentina already always has been Ireland Eastern Europe especially for European companies and India India still remains one of the largest or the most popular uh, destinations for custom e-learning outsourcing the reason why is because of the size of the English-speaking population and then you have a huge 
e-learning, uh, I would say, ecosystem in India, instructional designers, graphics, programming, etc. More, more of an extension of the IT industry, really. But that's there. As well as Philippines. Philippines has emerged in the recent years as a very popular destination for custom e-learning as well, surprisingly. But it has. And that's for a very good reason. They have a large English-speaking population as well. So in terms of the various factors, the choice of vendor that you choose, whether it's a freelancer, agency, offshore agency, that's and which geography they are based may also impact as far as bringing price of e-learning down. Obviously, companies are increasingly looking at reducing their costs and uh, looking at an offshore agency. It's part of that decision-making process. So these are more on the, I would say, more on the business side in terms of choice of develop, development options that you may have. In terms of what is the scope of the project, what is the brief that you give that particular vendor or provider or agency, or even if you're giving that brief to your in-house team, what is that brief and how does that impact price? The second part of it, Diana is going to take that up in the subsequent slides. Diana, so over to you. Thanks, Andy. So um, like Andy mentioned, I'm going to get down, um, you know, right into what constitutes the price uh, of your e-learning, what contributes to the variations that you see, um, and how multiple aspects come together to, um, you know, uh, build a price. Very often, uh, you know, we hear things like, oh, this is too much, and I wasn't expecting it to be so much, etc. But what I, we're going to try and do in this webinar is to break down those, um, the, the whys, the hows, so getting a little deeper as to what uh, goes into scoping out your work and coming up with a price. So the first thing that we would talk about is what we could get. That is, what is our input? What is going to come to us um, in order for us to uh, build what we're going to create? So classroom training. You might have presentation decks, uh, instructor-led decks, uh, student guides, instructor guides, handouts, etc. Now, they could be... Um, you know, one set of such documents, there could be multiple such decks. Very often you have multiple days of training, you know, so there's a whole bunch of word files, PPTs, etc. that needs to go into e-learning. So if you have a two-day training, it would probably translate into half or lesser of e-learning, right? So analyzing all of that, breaking down that structure, etc., is what contributes to the effort at the at the analysis phase. Sometimes all you might have are videos internal recordings of sessions, for example, or audio or podcast files. So there is no copyable content. The only content you have is what you're seeing in that video. What does that mean in terms of scope? You might have older courses that you've done internally. They could have been built in an older authoring tool by an older vendor that you might have. So if you have the source files, if you have the storyboards, etc., that, you know, the, that those courses came from, fantastic. If you don't, what happens? You've got to actually type out the content. You've got to extract it from scratch. And that would contribute to the effort that would go in at the very basic phase, which is the content collation phase. Now, if you've done e-learning before, you would have scripts or storyboards. So you have a structured set of documents. They're all in place, modules, topics, etc., all categorized together. That's relatively easier to work with. Sometimes you might just have Word or PPT files. It's not, it's not a presentation. It's not an instructor-led training. It's just a document that you probably started collating content. You've researched online. You've put stuff together. That's all you have. Again, this needs work. What is the duration of time? Or what is the duration of the seat time? Uh, how is the module structured? How many topics? How many pages? Etc. So in terms of input, here are the variety of things you can get. Some of it is clean. Most of it is not. So what goes into actually creating the outputs that you might need? So for example, you need to create a script. You've, you're looking at 20 PPTs, but actually your e-learning module is 60 minutes. So you've got to script out, you've got to cull out content, you've got to structure it, what's important, what's not. Rescript the activities from a classroom training, etc. That is important. Like I said, older courses, you don't have the files. You type them from scratch. Or you don't have the graphics, for example. You, uh, you have nothing to trace. You recreate them from scratch. So all of this is very heavy um, on the effort. So you would account for that in terms of you know, pricing or costing. 
the videos you've got to transcribe them you've got to take words out of those videos you could do that internally but most often agencies turn to other vendors transcription agencies so you've got to account for their time their cost whether they charge per word or hourly basis minute basis all of that depends on the agency that you're working with so you've got the content together now you've got to script now you've got to storyboard it put the visuals put the media direction what's going to happen to the content that you've actually pulled together that's a very important phase of the process that you've got to focus on and like i mentioned graphics what is the approach that you're going to take which i will talk about um, in the next slide but that's that's important very often we've heard planting but i have older courses but if you don't have the source files you know maybe your branding has changed so the graphics don't match the player doesn't match right so you've got to account for all of that when it comes to this phase so when you're actually starting off your input phase, these are the various, uh, all the variables that go into um, actually, you know, coming together for that first phase of the project, which is the analysis. Now, this is a big contributor, the instructional design approach. And before you actually get to the approach, you've got to consider who are your learners? Who is the target audience? What is their level of seniority? Um, have they experienced e-learning before? Do they like it? Did they not like it? What did they not like? Um, if they've never had exposure to e-learning, it becomes even tougher. You've got to take care of a multitude of things. And this really drives the instructional approach, the visual approach that you're going to take um, for the rest, uh, for, for your module. Are your learners mobile, for example? Are they always on the go? You're going to want to deliver something that's not one hour of training. It's probably faster. It's on the mobile. It's easier to access. So this is going to drive the approach that you take. Once you've understood your learners, now you actually want to get down into what is the, um, how do I want to deliver this training, right? So do you want an audio and media driven approach, um, which means more media, lesser text on screen, audio, etc. So how your instructional designer would get down to looking at your script, um, you know, putting things metaphorically on screen, a lot more activity, interactivity, etc. So that's an approach that is going to impact um, your course if you want something that's really heavily media driven, audio driven, visual, interactive, etc. Gamification seems to be a great trend uh, with e-learning nowadays. Um, we could have gamified courses, the entire course is gamified, uh, it could be a gamified assessment, you could just have elements of gamification, you know, um, like scoreboards, timers, uh, rewards, points, branching, decision making questions, etc. How complex you want this gamification to be, that much more complex the effort to develop and visualize it. What is the production value you're looking for? Is it elaborate or is it simple? For example, is it custom screens? Each screen is different from the other, different graphics, different interactivities, or is it simple reusable template based screens? Can you reuse elements uh, through the course? You build a bunch of, let's say 10, 15, 20 templates and you reuse them across modules. That brings down costs, but if you want uh, more boutique, more handcrafted kind of screens, that's going to impact uh, your effort as well. And finally, scenario, story, or conversation-based type of training. Do you want to weave a story? Assuming, let's say you have some really dry content that, you know, is probably delivered in PDFs or, a, you know, a video file or whatever. You want to take that content. Your instructional designer is actually going to have to um, munch on it, digest it, you know, and deliver it through dialogue through decision-making questions, Q&A, etc. The way you script that content is going to impact uh, the efforts that you would put into uh, bringing that particular module alive. Another huge driving factor, the visual design approach. So you figured out what is the instructional approach you're going to take. You want an audio-driven course, you want it highly visual, etc. What is the visual approach that is going to supplement it? Are we talking about photograph-based screens from stock photography, royalty-free photographs, all text on screen kind of approach? Or are we talking about illustrations? You want an illustrated character, illustrated backgrounds. Um, what is the type of illustration you want? Cartoon, artistic, um, is there semi-realistic or is it you know, very line drawing, color fill kind of an approach? Um, 
the player that you're going to use. Do you want to use the custom, do you want to use the default player that is available within the tool, or do you want to customize it? Even that goes through multiple levels of customization. Do you just want to replace the buttons, the, the navigation, or do you want to actually build a theme around the player? So if you're if you're using a story based or you're using a game uh, based approach for your learning, you might want to think about a theme player. You know, let's say you're talking about um, a, a trekking theme. That's how you want you know your gamification. Each module is a base camp, etc. You can't have a simple corporate looking player. You might want to you know have a player that complements that theme. That kind of effort, the graphic effort, the asset creation effort is what is going to impact um, the amount of effort you spend in this phase as well. Technology, another huge driving factor. So very often we have the question, custom versus rapid authoring. Custom development, um, let's say using a tool like, using maybe HTML5. Custom coding versus using a rapid authoring tool that's available. The choice that you make there is going to impact the effort that you take. For example, authoring tools are easier to build and maintain, right? You, for example, if you take a tool like Storyline, you can get your agency or vendor or freelancer, whatever, to use that tool. You can buy a license. It's something that you learn within a week and you can maintain. But what happens to custom development? Um, responsive, if you have a requirement for multi-device compatibility, do you want it responsive? Responsive now seems to be the need to have because, you know, of the trend, of the learning trend. Some tools offer responsive customization quite easily, whereas others not so much for example do you want it uh, do you want a custom html5 responsive output or do you want to go with a rapid authoring tool that offers responsive design easily that is going to impact your cost now there are within rapid authoring as well there are certain tools that offer easier responsive design than others for example rise or gomo they are meant to be responsive they're meant for the phone so they work quite seamlessly whereas tools like captivate or lectora um, they're not really responsive, they're more adaptive, which means it's not a one-size-fits-all. So doing a course in a tool like Rise or Storyline versus doing it in Captivate or Lectora, the efforts there are actually double or triple because you don't have a one-size-fits-all. You're, you're building the same screen in multiple different layouts, and hence your development effort is going to be double or triple depending on the tool that you use. And finally, do you have any accessibility requirements? What level of access accessibility are you looking at? Um, are you going to test it on multiple devices, screen readers, etc.? That is also going to impact um, the efforts that you would put into this. So you have instructional design. What is the approach? That would drive the visual design approach. And finally, what is the tech uh, support or uh, the technology that you're looking to deliver both of these combined together? Another impact point here is the development levels. Now, what I've outlined here is typically industry standard. Level 1, 2, and 3, um, you know, visually represented at level 1 being um, really basic page turner, minimal interactivity, all text on screen kind of approach. Moving on to level 2, where a lot of e-learning happens, audio, media driven, highly interactive, etc. And finally, level 3, which is conversation, story, game, etc. In the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you a few mock-ups that I will try to um, that will that I hope will show you how these levels actually build up and how efforts are hence impacted. For example, a level one kind of course. If you look at this, um, I've used. Uh, dummy text, dummy imagery, but this is more or less just to give you an idea of what a level one would be like. You have a photograph, you have a huge chunk of text, uh, limited media on screen, clean, crisp, great for um, larger courses. Uh, if you have a volume-based course, uh, if you have um, learners who don't have access to audio, a great way to train. Now we move to a level two kind of course, right? So if you see here, the text on screen is, is minimal, which means an instructional designer has actually looked at that content, pulled out the important aspects, key phrases, etc. Put that on screen, use some metaphorical representation, added some interactivity, etc. Everything all of a sudden is a lot more easier on the eye. 
Now, a variation of this here, we have a photographic approach. You could have a variation of this where you might want it, you might want an illustrated avatar. Now, within that level two, we're actually looking at a variation. So you have a photograph which is available on royalty free, uh, on a royalty free site. And now you have a custom drawn avatar. This avatar could be multiple poses. You might want it static. You might want it animated. You might want backgrounds, etc. So within that base level, you could have something that takes you up a little higher in terms of instruction and visual value. A level three, when we look at, um, if you see, now this is completely illustrated. Um, there's hardly any text on screen, so most of the uh, training would be happening through the audio. You could have a learning path. You could have, um, you know, the learners navigate through this, etc. If you see, again, this follows a very different approach. You might want gated um, topics. You've got to answer a certain bunch of questions to get to the next, etc., etc. So within this, we can take it, you know, to any level that uh, your instruction designer might see fit. A conversation-based approach, again, highly illustrated characters. This is another variation of a level three. Um, all of it, almost all content is delivered through dialogue, very little on screen. Moving on for, from the level, so those were really um, the, the big guys that impact um, the costing. But there are a few very important aspects that we want to talk about here really quickly. Volume. What, so this is a huge contributing factor to cost, right? How many modules? What is the duration of each? Is there any reusability within those modules, you know, like templates, assets, etc.? Or do you want each module handcrafted? Who do you want on the job? What is the team like? For example, for complex content, if you want a complex uh, ID approach, you might want a senior instructional designer. For a certain type of illustration style, you might want an artist on the job, etc. Do you need vendors? Is there any transcription, translation involved? Do you want it multilingual, etc.? So who is the team? If you're, for example, if you're doing a multilingual course, you want to bring an external team on board, right? You want translation vendors. You've got to account for their effort and time. The process as well, as an example, how many stakeholders are going to be involved in this review? How many review cycles? Right? We generally have an alpha and a beta stage. But what if you want, what if you have multiple stakeholders, five or six? Number of reviews equal number of rework cycles. So that's going to impact um, quite hard as well. Timelines. So some companies actually charge a higher rate for rushed jobs. The tougher the job, the shorter the time, probably a higher hourly rate or a higher you know, overall fixed cost that might get charged. And finally, your subject matter time. If you're working, if you have a subject matter expert internally or you're working with subject matter experts from other business units, some of them have, you might want to have to pay for their time, compensate for their time. Similarly, as an agency, we might work with an external subject matter expert for support, for gaps, uh, you know, filling in content gaps, etc. We've got to account for their time as well. So these aspects along with the others really come together. So if you see, it's not just you know, here is a storyboard and, you know, let's build a course. There's a lot that goes in uh, right from what is the input to, you know, whose time are we counting for on the job. So now that we've spoken about um, what are those uh, impact points, we're going to, so we've built a cost calculator. Um, you know, that is ready, readily available for anybody who might want to use it. And I'm going to take you through um, all these topic, all these points that we just spoke about. You're now going to see how it impacts your cost, uh, uh, cost in a real life scenario. So I'm just going to um, navigate away from this screen. Uh, just give me a second. So um, I have, so this is a resource that we've created um, on our website. You would find it in the resources section called the e-learning cost calculator. And I'm going to run you through one um, specific requirement and all the aspects that we talked about, 
most of them, the larger impact ones, are going to be covered in how the cost that is generated for you. So please note, this calculator is meant for high-level ballparks, right? So um, ultimately, if you want a custom solution, which everybody does, no, all learners are not the same, all requirements are not the same, all expectations are not the same, you're going to want to talk to a solutions expert. But for you to kind of get an idea for a budgeting purpose, if you're thinking about how you can do things differently, etc., this tool is going to help you plan for that, envision that. So to start off with, um, do you have a specific project in mind? That's the first question that it's going to throw up. And I'm going to say yes. Select the type of project you're looking to build. So we've segregated into explainers and e-learning. I'm going to run with e-learning for now. So you would see there is a need help button that is available here. If at any point in time um, you're not sure of what you want, you want a custom quote, you want to talk to somebody before you even get to a quote phase, that's where you can connect with our learning solutions team. What is the type of project you require? Is it a course conversion, probably one tool to another? Is it custom course development from scratch? Is it updating an existing uh, e-learning course that you have, changing the branding, upping the technical specifications, um, upping, upping the instructional design approach? I'm going to select custom course development. I want to build a course from scratch. What is the challenge this training will address? What are you aiming to achieve uh, with this training? Um, if it's any other, you can select that, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to select induction. Describe your project here. So just a little bit of a brief of what the project is that you're looking for. So I'm gonna say um, induction training for new hires on policies and procedures. So anything that um, gives us a little bit of an idea of what you're looking for. Now how many modules are you looking to develop? So if you see we've got a drop down out here. Um, if it's a large volume of courses, you would be directed to a custom code screen because um, if there's something that you're not sure of, you might have more than 10, but what is that exact number? You might want to um, select that option. For now, I'm going to select two modules. What is the average duration? I'm going to say 30 minutes. So if it's two modules at 30 minutes, I'm really looking for a quote for one learning hour. Select the preferred authoring tool. So we've listed a bunch of tools over here. If you feel the tool that you're looking for is not listed, please select any other. It will direct you to um, a custom quote section and somebody from the team can get in touch with you. But if you know the tool that you're looking for, select that here and I'm going to select Storyline for the purpose uh, of this demo. Now as you will see um, out here, uh, these are the various levels that we discussed. So what is the level of graphic and interactive design that you're looking for? Is it a level one, which is an all text on screen with or without animation, minimal interactivity, etc.? Or are you looking for a level two, which is a media audio led delivery of content? Is it a level three, higher level conversation, theme, story based, etc.? Or is it a hybrid of levels? So we have an option here for custom code. So the way we define these levels is actually a very base definition. So level one doesn't necessarily need to have all text and a photograph. You might want a highly illustrated level one, no audio, with some gamification. That's possible and that's when you would select a custom, uh, the custom option. For now, I'm going to select level two. What is the type of input you have? If you remember, that's the first thing we spoke about. Do you have structured documents or do you not? I'm going to say no, I don't have anything. I probably have a bunch of documents that you're going to have to structure. Would you like to have audio? Yes, I would. And I'm going to click next. So we're done with the questions. The last um, part of this tool is where you enter your details so that we can email the quote to you. Um, you fill in these details. I'm not going to select that as of now. I have um, already done this prior to the call. So this is what would get generated when you hit the submit button. 
a PDF would be sent to your email ID with the project that you selected what is the challenge that you're facing what is the project requirement if you remember we selected induction training I also selected two modules 30 minutes each in storyline level 2 and I'm saying that I don't have anything I would require everything from structuring to scripting storyboarding etc and here is an estimated ballpark quote that would be generated like I said this is a very high ballpark um, a lot of factors go in like we've just discussed but this will give you an idea from a budgeting perspective from a planning perspective generally what you want to do and uh, we hope that this um, tool is going to address that need all right so um, I'm going to move uh, back to my slide right now <clears throat> So now that we've spoken about everything that comes together, I really want to summarize this uh, quickly. So as we know, there are multiple factors that come together. There is the input. What are we going to get? What, what do we have to work with? What is the scope of work? The level of development, ID, visuals, the tool, the technology, etc. What level? How many modules? What is the duration of those modules? Reusability, etc., etc. That comprises the scope of work. What is the process we want to follow? How many review cycles? Are there external vendors involved? Um, do you need subject matter expertise, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And finally, who develops it? The slide that Andy started off with. Do you want an agency or a freelancer? Local, offshore, in-house? Or do you want to do it in-house? Do you want to do it offshore? Do you have a consultant that you work with, etc.? So this is um, and actually to summarize all of this another really important factor that you might want to consider is your vision versus the budgets that you have what do you want to do and how much can you actually do with that vision so if you're at the beginning of your year great if you're in the middle of a year you might not have enough budgets and I think at that point in time you really need to consider a hybrid solution and what works best within your budgets so I think we're almost at uh, the end of um, this. Happy to take any questions that you might have at this point. I see people have um, raised their hands during the, uh, the webinar and I'm going to attempt to answer some of them. But um, if there are any questions, feel free to ask me now. Okay, so I'm going to take a quest. I'm sorry, Andy, was that you? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, Anna. go ahead. All right. So I'm going to take uh, a question. Um, what if I do not have content? Would you, would you write it from scratch? So that's a good question, actually. We, we very often, um, we have clients who say, I don't have content. I want to build something, but I don't have content. So I think it really depends on the type of content. For example, if it is specific to your organization like policies or processes, we would really prefer that you drive the content because we don't know your systems as well as you do. But if it is generic training, you know, safety training, uh, fire training, etc., etc., we we you know can do that for you. So I hope I have answered that question. Um, Um, one more question that I have, how is seat time calculated? So um, when we analyze the content, we um, split the content, we split the course into primarily three different types of uh, slides. There's non-interactive, there's interactive, and there's question slides. And we estimate that each slide takes about an average of a minute to 1.5 minutes to complete. So that is how we define seat time, which means in 60 minutes, we would have 55 to 60 slides of this composition. Of course, this could vary if you have scenario slides, etc. But this is the industry way of calculating seat time. Uh, 
Um, another question that I have is uh, where is the tool located and is it accessible on mobile? So um, yes, like I showed you, if you go to our website, it is available in the resources section. Uh, we would also be sending you an emailer out with a link to that calculator. And yes, it is responsive so you can access it on your phone. And I think we have time for uh, one more question. Um, so I have another question. Do you provide content for K-12? So to be very honest, uh, I would go back to the first question um, that I was asked. Uh, we do not um, build content from scratch from K-12, um, but we can work with it. We have done, um, you know, courses in, um, uh, for K-12, uh, but no, we don't build content, but it depends on the subject, on what you're looking for, we can talk about it, um, you know, probably connect after this webinar to really talk about your specific requirement. We're actually more focused on corporate e-learning, which is why, you know, um, but we can, you know, obviously discuss it uh, on a one-on-one -on -one post this. Um, another question that I have, what do you mean by custom level and how do you cost that? Okay, so um, you can customize any level. Like I mentioned, a level one doesn't necessarily need to be an all text, you know, really boring kind of an approach. It can actually be highly interactive, highly visual, gamified, etc. So how would we cost to answer the qu your part, uh, your question on how do we uh, price that? So we would analyze the amount of customization required. So for example, if you want a level one, which is an all text on screen, but you want a fully illustrated course, in that case, our asset creation, our graphic, our visual design approach will be a lot um, higher. So our efforts on that front would be higher, but development efforts would be probably closer to a level one. So we would have to have that conversation with you. We would use the level one as a basic, but we would have to you know, do an amalgamation of all the efforts uh, to really come to that custom code. So custom could be anything that you want it to be. It could be videos as well. Um, a lot will depend on the conversation that we would have with you. Um, If there are, uh, okay, I think I have another question. Um, let me just have a look. Yes, so um, here I'm sharing our contact details. Uh, I was, uh, you know, so one of the questions was um, contact details. So here it is on screen. You can write to me directly, diana.fowler at enyotalearning.com. Uh, I would be happy to set up a call, a meeting, uh, talk to you a little more about your needs. Of course, I put Andy's email uh, ID out there as well as the contact us ID. But feel free to reach me um, directly on the landline or my email as well. So um, you're welcome. So I guess uh, we are almost out of time then. Um, uh, happy to, so thank you everyone for your time. I know it's a weekend, it's a Friday, but thank you for taking the time to be with us. Um, you know, this was a subject very close to our hearts and we're glad we could share that with you. Uh, we've, we were at the end of our time, that's 45 minutes. Um, happy to connect. Um, you know, separately, my email ID is here. I'm available on LinkedIn. So is Andy. Um, and uh, yes, we can set up a one-on-one -on -one chat. So um, Andy, if there's anything you want to add, I think we can wrap this up. Oh, that's fine, Dan. And thanks, thanks a lot. And uh, that's it. And uh, I see some people have asked us to contact them one-on-one. -on -one. We'll do so uh, separately. Happy yes. weekend, everybody. Yes. Thank you, and have have a good weekend. Bye bye.